So, okay, is my screen visible? Or can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. Yeah, okay. So we will be, as you have checked, or, or most of us have attained the introduction session, you have been introduced to a new challenge that is, and the, like we are going to see on the tutorial sessions how to do the basic things so or how to um, use, or, you know, we're going to see things that are going to help us to do the tasks or to accomplish the tasks. The first one is uh, to, uh, this the first session of this tutorial is about data handling and visualization using Google Sheet. So, um, as you have noticed, we are given with a data that is vast, large. Also, we might have some uh, complication. We need to know how to handle and we need to know how to use the data properly in order to accomplish the task right. So, what is let's start from data handling. So, there are many actually, there are many tasks that involve analyzing the data, there are many projects that involve data, analyzing the data and doing some uh, thing, cleaning or understanding the data. And after all, or at the end of the day, what we are going to use the data for is to have some understanding or some to be, you know, to make a good decision about that scenario, which the data is given on okay. So in order to have the base or in order to make a good decision, we need to know how to understand and how to clearly interpret the data that we are given. So the data handling refers to the process and techniques used to manage, manipulate and analyze the data. So it encompasses range of activities aimed at ensuring the data is accurate and accessible and useful for decision making. And then there's the data visualization, which I actually will say that there is also one one thing that will help us to understand the data and to good to make a good decision. Um, so yeah, uh, if we are given with, with the data, we don't really run to the under like we don't really run straight up to the making some talks or making some presentations about the data. Okay, that is not right because mostly data is uh, like mostly if it's for project or for some uh, assignments or for a bigger thing. Uh, people will use two or three data merged together and there might not be consistency. There might be some openings, some mistakes and errors and uh, we might even have some wrong data, okay? So if we're about to make our decision based on the data, so we're going to end up making the wrong decision or the wrong understanding of the data. So when we have the data, we need to know how to um, handle it and how and to visualize it. So what would be the step? It is the first is collection in storage, which in case, in this case, we're not going to see on that. So it is just, you know, the whole step, the whole concept of doing with the data or yeah, working with data. This is the whole concept. So there, there's the gathering raw data from various source. It might be from surveys, sensors, transactions, or database from primary source, secondary source. You will be see, seeing much of, uh, about data and things like that in the uh, in other like sessions, week sessions or challenges. So, but yeah, there is this the first step of collection and uh, having a data in the first place. And there is the organization which is structuring data to a log logical format. Okay. So as I told you, we're going to collect the data from different parts. So we need to have a better form of organizing the data or structure that will help us to that will make the data as simple as possible. And then there is the processing, which is we have the raw data. We will get, we're going to transform the raw data into uh, a more useful format to cleaning, aggregations, and summarizations. So yeah, they go step by step. So there's the cleaning, there's the aggregation, and then we'll have some summarization about that. So it involves removing errors, filling missing values, or converting data type. It might be, involve another method. Also, it just depends on the type of the data, the cleanness of the data, and things like that. And there's the analysis. So depending on the data that we have, which is transformed, we're going to make some anal ana some analysis or judgments or decisions actually. So this might involve statistical methods, algorithms, data visualization techniques, and again, everything that will be useful for that specific scenario. And there's the presentation. So it's just presenting your um, conclusion or your insights about the data. 
and then storing the data in a uh, like in a good condition okay so yeah these are the main steps that would be uh, the better to follow or that we're going to follow if we are if we're about to work with the data so as i am going as i was saying uh there is this like in the first place when we're given with the, with the, with the data we're not going to just say uh, we're not just going to go straight to the conclusion or to using the data exactly or immediately immediately sure. we need to pass we need to understand if the data is dirty or if it is clean okay so how would we know uh, if that data is dirty the first one is spelling error and the punctuation if there's a duplicated data if there's another data and different like for like different currencies using uh so, so like here you can we can just understand the spelling error in the punctuation but in the duplicated data part you know sometimes uh data might have um uh, you know some data so okay for example let's say we're collecting data of age from a group of 10 people okay it's just a commenting that uh, three or four people will be in the same age range or in the same exact number of age okay so you might expect some uh, i some uh, some sort of duplication in a data but depending on your data what what um, amount of duplication is normal uh, are they supposed to be duplicated uh, okay so like maybe if the data is about if the data is collecting your mother's and father's name probably most probably you're not going to expect that duplicated that must amount of duplicated data right so you're going to judge uh, what amount of duplicated data will be okay to find to find on this specific data depending on the uh, on what the data is talking about so null data or empty data they you know like while while merging two data or things like that they might jump or they might leave some data empty so it might uh, yeah that uh, feature of the data will uh, make us the judge the data as a dirty data here in different currencies it was about to say uh, you might like imagine you want to put uh, a dollar and on the like you have a, a column that is about uh, in fund or in money or a budget so you you wanted to put uh, the dollar sign and you might end up writing the euro sign okay so yeah you that is also an indicator for a dirty data and otherwise inconsistent formatting uh yeah you might just put percentage as a currency in, in the data that is also an indicator of, for the data that it is not a clean data um and then the labeling the inconsistent fielding you know like if you're expecting an in, in each field you might put any which is which indicates a wrong labeling right so yeah those my those types of uh, uh situations or uh, characteristics will help us to identify if the data is clean or not so while trying to identify the uh, the clear like the cleanness of the data you might consider those in different aspects into mind and then check for those uh, uh yeah check for those uh characters on the data okay um so maybe it might be hard to go through your eyes like if the data is large or big it's not going to be easy to go through all the data and uh, check the whether the data is clean or not so you can use uh, some functions right so yeah before that i like how many of you yeah, I would really, it would really be nice if I can have your insight. Okay. I am so, I, okay, you know, while I'm presenting, I can't read the chat message. So if I am presenting, then it was better if you guys, uh, yeah, just raised your hand and talk. And yeah, we can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah. Adigo boy. Adigo boy. Can you go? Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. I sent that message on the chat box. To be frank with you, I'm unable to understand your presentation. I'm struggling to understand your words and the commonest words I could pick there were data, 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 data. So, okay. that's just my position. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, it's okay. It's really nice that you have uh, said what you feel, but is that the case with everyone? I mean, are you not able to understand my pronunciation or my words? The rest of you? Okay, Elvis. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I, I just want to find out if you were moving your slides while you were presenting, because I've just been seeing the introductory introduction. That's just what I've been seeing. Thank you. Okay, Elvin. Elvis. Yeah, I was moving the slide actually. I was jumping from like. I was jumping from slides to slides. Maybe it is a little bit similar in template wise. So maybe you cannot uh, track that. That is why you. So yeah, while discussing about that slide, I was not yeah jumping through the slides. Maybe that is why. I'm just uh, wondering about. Oh, I understand you fine. Okay. We can understand. Okay, I will try. Thank you. Uh, I will try to make. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to speak with a proper pronunciation okay i will try that uh so i think we can continue no actually i was about to ask i was here to ask a question right how many of you have used uh, google sheets before what do you prefer like do you prefer using google sheets or excel or other um, data analysis mechanism or how are you with the data it's really good if i can get this insight from you and Okay, that's real. Yeah, maybe some of you can uh, you can open your mic and talk. Okay, yes, I prefer Excel. Mahalit. Okay, Maile, he said Google Sheet. Adi Boyka, he said Excel. Hmm. Okay, some of you, if you really want to, I can't use Excel. If you want to uh, just speak up, that would be nice. Hmm. Yeah. So I think most of you are kind of familiar with Google Sheet, right? So nice, yeah. I can't use Excel because of my PC. Yeah, okay. So yeah, it's not um, wait, it's not like literally a new concept. There is some concept that we know before. Okay, we can proceed. But I was just saying to, we might sometimes we can check uh, for like for we can use the if and we can count if there are some numerics or some values that are not related with um, i mean that are not related with the thing that we want to mention there okay we're going to see that or we're going to see those scenarios but yeah we can see, use the functions so let's say we have many missing values which is more which is one of the keys that we face most of the time okay there are going to be many empty values or many uh uh yeah empty sales which have which don't have any value so how are we going to handle the data so by checking if there are any missing for example in your data so let there are those cases the sulfur dioxide the nitrogen the carbon monoxide okay so you're going to see if there are a missing value in in each column okay and what amount of the value is missing and we're going to you you can proceed from that to the data cleaning option of the missing value so you can just you might remove them yeah the first step is, the first thing is the first thing to do is the imputation okay depending yeah, depending on the percentage of missing values, either fill them with appropriate statistics, mean, median, or mode, or you can, re like the, the second one is, that's to remove them. So, imitation means which is, you can calculate the average, right? The mean, the median, and the mode. So, probably one of those, those numbers uh, will indicate that empty sale better than an empty uh, uh, value, right? So, calculating the mean or the median or the mode value, we can replace the empty cell with those with one of those values. And the second one is remove value, which is if the you know if if it is not that large amount of the data with an empty value, and the, if it is a specific column or row, like the whole column or row, that is not going to be an option. But you can consider removing those rows or columns if they don't provide substantial information or if they you know um for example let's say if we're if, we, if you're trying to, to calculate uh, um yeah like what amount what is going to be the age of the population if you're trying to estimate that or if you're going if you're 
making or doing analysis on those uh, data then uh, maybe their mothers and their fathers they might not have any impact on that so if you have those type of columns then you can just remove them yeah this is just what we have said and the other one is outlier detection which is we can identify outliers which is uh by outlier we mean that there are some values that are that doesn't go with the value okay with the other value for example let's say again uh, in age you're trying to col collect the age value or the age number of uh, high school students and you, you some of the data are like 45 53 and things like that so it's not that probable that a high school student will have that kind of age right so you, you we're going to call those data sets an outlier and again on outlier we can handle outliers like depending on the context we could remove the outlier or you can um, just like using capping methods we can just go to there uh, we can just replace them with another value which is again for maybe the mean and the median okay so the other part is the creating visualization so if we are if we have uh, uh, if we have passed those if we try to clean the data as much as possible and we are going to have relatively clean data cleaner data right so we can go to the visualization part of to see the data their distributions to understand the data better okay so we can generate various charts and plots using g sheets to visualize data distribution trends and relationships and yeah and you're, for the future you actually you're going to use google data studio but uh, not on this issue you're going to cover about the Google data studio in another session mm, yeah you can also use that for advanced interactive visualization okay so those are those are the pro processes and uh, this is the presentation so let's try to illustrate some of them here so let's say uh yeah it's just maybe if the, for those people who haven't tried uh both google Sheets and excel before yeah, just if you have a Google account, you can just open that. You can open your Chrome, and here on the six button, you can just click this, and you can find Google Sheets. Okay, or also in the Drive, you can create new Google Sheets. Okay, you can just use both the ways, and you can have you can open Google Sheets here, and there's in you can win in the name of the sheets here and you can do the other works here so i have already have one uh, tab that is opened or one google sheet tab so let's just go with that okay so here we have a data yes yeah, forget about the structure in the concept of the data okay yes yeah, thank you thank you very much the data set we are giving is in Excel. So how do we, do we have to import the Excel into Google Sheets? Okay. So you, are you keeping the data with Excel? Yes, I've downloaded it in Excel, or you want us to use it directly from the drive? Yeah, actually it is just, you know, you can bring, file and import any type of uh, data here. So if it is in Excel, then you can just import it to the Google Sheet. But I'm not sure the structure of the data that you have. If it is, I, I don't think that it is in Excel actually. It's the same but, yeah. data sent to us in the drive, so it was downloaded as to uh, Excel. So I think if it's your uh, PC by default, your like your computer will download it in Excel, right? That is the default of yes. your computer. Yeah. So yes. yeah, it's okay. You can just import it here. As I have shown you, maybe let's see here. Yeah, new. Yeah, forget this one. And yeah, there you can just fight and import from your shared, maybe from research and you might also upload from your computer. You can browse if it is on your computer and you can just uh, upload your uh, data in Google Sheet, okay? Is that clear? Yes, yeah, it's clear, thank you. Okay. 
So yeah, we have just seen how to open uh, the sheet or the page. You can make some, you can zoom the, like your page like this if you want it to be zoomed or not. And then, uh, so after having the data here, uh, so you need to know what type of procedures, what type of, uh, uh, what do I need to do first? What do I need to do second? Those kinds of things you need to know based on your data or based on what, what you really want to do with the data, okay? But the main, uh, the, one of the main things or the main concepts we're going to see it here. So if we, if you need to format some portion of your data, like let's see here, we have just made this one yellow. Like let's go to here and in format. So if it is about formatting or structuring, we can find most of them here. Okay. If you put, if you want to put some of the data in uh, visually in a, in a visually appealing way, you can just use our alternating colors and you can change what type of alternating current colors do we need to use from here, right? So yeah, it is going to make them a little bit more uh, visually appealing if they are an important data. Okay, so also here again, if we want to use just again in format, we can use the conditional formatting. So you might um use different colors for this so by just coloring this we can put you know it's just it's it is reading from l5 which is l5 to l17 it's just uh hand put a shade on this okay adego adego yes please I, I just want to understand what you have identified in the data set and what you are trying to do yeah, okay. Uh, well, perhaps the criteria to... for identifying those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I just say that it depends on your situation, on, on your data. So you're going to decide if there is an order to do this for your project or not. If it is important to do this on your project or not. So we're just going to cover some features of Google Sheets and uh, and you're also going to discover other uh, like. Uh, other features and you will decide for if you are supposed or if you really need to have some uh, future like some data from the google sheets uh, formatted or not it depends on you so i'm just seeing uh, i'm just trying to explain how to do that or there are these types of formats or these types of options to do in google sheets and you will decide for what purpose that you want to use uh, the specific feature of g sheets did you give my point, Adiko Burika? It's okay, like, let's, let's go, let's go. Okay, then you can do that. Then, as I have told you, you can just for blurring one of the columns or one of, the, like for giving some implication for that specific data, you can also use the conditional format rules. So depending, uh, like you can put some format rules here is empty yeah there's nothing empty okay text contains text start with um text start you with like you can put some conditions or formulas in order to put some colors or for some conditional formats here uh what is what makes this part different from this formatting is you will just make some formatting for all the data uh but here you're not going to do that so if you're making or if you're about to make a presentation on using some part of your Google Sheet, it will be really nice to use the formatting part, okay? And you can also just get here how to use the, maybe if you want to put those num numerical values in a point form, in a point zero zero form, yeah, yeah, you can just put or float them to point zero just like this, uh, or if you also, uh, like uh, edit some you can just get most of the formatting files here or labels here okay on the first row and on this row and if there is another format or you can get you 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 want to use you can just go here to the font size to the rotation wrapping takes numbers so yeah this page is all about the formats or the formatting and 
So yeah, let's try to find the, uh, before the data visualization part, let's try to do what we've done here, what we've said here. Before the outlier uh, detection, we've said that we can put or we can replace some of the values with their mean or with the median value, right? If they are empty. So let's just put here some values to zero. Let, let's, this is empty. Let's put this one also empty. Okay. So if we want to replace those empty data with their mean or with the average value, we need to first calculate their average value, right? So by selecting those value, for example, let's say we want to calculate the average value of those uh, data. You can just go to the insert and function and average, which is the mean. Yeah, so I think we, it will be better if we can do it in a new place, right? In a new cell. Here yeah, we can go to insert. Average. So average of what we can put, or we can just scroll over the data that we want to calculate the average value for, okay? If it is the value that we want to calculate the average, then here, since the data is even 256, then the, the mean value of this data is 256. That is saying that, okay? Actually, it is a country code, so it have a constant value. So it, you need to, uh, as I've told you, this is not, this data is just a data that is applied for another purpose. So you don't have to be worried about the data. So we can just, since this one is an amount, we can do the, calculate the average value on the amount one. It would have been better okay. So yeah, we still can do that in insert function, the average. So we can click or drag the data through this. And yeah, it is 200, 2930, which is the average value of, you can just check the function L2 to L17 or it is also colored here. So we have the mean value, okay? Let's say we were having, we were having an empty values here. So we need to find the empty values in this column and replace them with that value. It was 289, I guess, right?
yeah, yeah, hello, hello, sorry, I would like, I was having a um, connection problem in the office. I would like to say sorry, so we can continue. Okay. So I think I I wish if you can if you can guys explain if you really didn't get the point by opening your mic at every stage. So I will cut the level. Would like to okay. Thank you, my love. I will start the love. Can you speak up and so like you didn't understand what the topic is? Okay. Okay, we'll watch the and that's okay. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for your please. I need because when you went to the Google Sheets, have, yeah, can you can you hear me too? Yeah, why on the Google Sheets? Do you need to understand what we are trying to do with the Google Sheets. I don't okay. understand. You are just showing us what, what are we trying to do with the Google Sheets. So please. It's uh, we okay. It's, uh, you are breaking a little bit. Hello, can you hear me Okay, thank you. I am. Thank you. Hello. So it would be really... Hello? Be nice if you have... It will be really nice if you can ask so that it will be helpful. So, uh, you were, uh, have you attained the invitation? The, this week, Aloha Tobi, challenge introduction. Have you attained the challenge introduction? What is the question, please? Yes, yes. Yes, I attended the introduction. So from the question given in the introduction, so I'm expecting that the, this, uh, this aspect you will link it to the question given in the introduction. So you just went straight forward. You don't tell us what we are going to do.
sorry guys i i i, I left uh, i was really having a problem with the connection again so yeah yeah it's really i'm really having a problem with the connection that is why so i was trying to answer the question in uh what are we trying trying to do or what is what are we trying to work right so it's that have if you guys have attained the introduction session probably most of you have attained that uh we are given with the data right with the data that we're supposed to make an analysis and an analysis and then the product or the end thing to do is to make a decision based on the, the data that is given right if you understand the challenge that is this week's challenge so in order to make the anal analysis and in order to be to reach on some decision we need to have we need to understand the data we need to clean the data and we're going to we're going to do that using Google Sheet. That is what we were trying. We were trying to see. Okay. So, uh, who who had asked this question? I forgot who asked, but yeah, Abdi, you were you were about. Oh yeah, Olu, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I asked the question. So I was expecting that from the data given this morning. So you relate what you are going to do with the data. So you just went straight forward to the sheets. So I don't you get you need to relate what you explain to the data given so that we can know how to solve the question given. Thanks. Okay, so I think what you've said is you need to relate the data given with the Google Sheet. Was that what you what you were trying to say? We need so, yes, that the problem what are we going to do with the data given? I'm going to so are we going to submit the assignments. Yes, that is what I'm trying to say. You know, what are you going to do with the data that you're given? Okay, you're going to load them into Google Sheet. Then, before making, so you need to understand what you really want to do with the data or what the project is. It is to reach on some decisions, right? So, in order to reach to a decision level or in order to decide based on the data, we need to have a clean data in the first place. We have just provided a data. We have just provided a random uh, like it's not a random actually but we have just provided the data right so your first step will be to make the data uh, to make to make sure if the data is clean so in the presentation we have just mentioned what are the some uh, aspects or some things that we need to do in order to make sure or in order to know if the data is clean or if it is big, uh, dirty okay so after like knowing that you know if there are empty sales if there are duplicated items after reaching that, you need what is the other thing or the other, the other step, the next step that you will do. It is removing the data, uh, maybe like replacing them with a the mean or with a mode value, which we, which we were trying to see. Okay, so what, what will be the next step? That is what I was trying to explain. Is that a little bit clear? A lot of it? What about now? Thank you. I will I just keep following. Yeah, okay. Hello, can I say something? Yes, of course. Bear not. Yes, sorry. So for me, I, it's a bit hard for me to follow. So um um I'll be happy if you could share if 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 there is a, a, a guidelines that you could share on the approach to to do that. It's been very helpful so that once you do the hands-on, you can be able to use it follow it and then you can be able to get it uh, like your asked and uh, if you are to clean the data i'm sure that there are basic um parameters that we need to look out for so if those are included then we can watch out for them when we see the data and how we can clean and then also create the mean mode uh, 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 part that you're doing yeah so are you asking to make that uh, practical or to see that in a visually or are you asking you to if we can do it with the data that we have. Okay, so what I'm asking is for you to share if uh, uh, there's some guidelines on the approach, the process uh, for, for us to identify the key things to look out for in the data that will make it okay, it's dirty or clean, and also how to um, uh, make analysis of uh, export it. That will be fine to share with us so we can use it to, to follow it. Yes. Yes, exactly. So it's uh, if it we're going to uh, share the 
presentation the video link and also the powerpoint but we were like before the network was cathed we, i was trying to show you how to calculate the median the mode yeah we were about to see that and how to replace the value actually we have seen how to calculate the mean and we will replace the value that specific part or the empty values we're going to see that yeah like as a as a guideline i mean you can bernard okay you can you can speak okay thank you yeah. okay okay well isaac Isaac Henry, so you can go on. Isaac, can you hear me? Okay, Abdi, I thought it's a mistake. Maybe it might be a mistake. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. I'm Abdi. Uh, okay. After opening uh, the data in uh, Google Sheet, I'm not able to analyze it. It tells me that uh, I can only view the document. Okay, it might be a problem of an access. Is that, uh, is that saying view only on the upper part of the tab? On one of the tab, it, is yeah. that saying view only? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so are you trying to open uh, the data in what uh, Google should, I mean? Is, is that an email that you've that you're trying on the training or is that a different email the same the same email okay um so yeah i think it's a it's a um you don't have an access you might not get the access but yeah we're going to let you or we're going to let every tra trainee to have the access to open the uh, Google Sheet, so I will inform the sure. Nati for to, to give you the access. Okay, thank you. It's okay. Isaac, you were about to speak. Isaac, can you hear me? Okay, so yeah, let's just proceed. Uh, so I think maybe uh, since we were having a little bit of connection problem and misunder there might be a misunderstanding. So we're trying to go through how to use the Google Sheet in order to analyze the data that is given in our document challenge, okay? You can find the data that you're going to be working on the, on the challenge document and open that document using Google Sheet and then try to decide whether data, the, Actually, it's not kind of a decision, but try to make an analysis whether the data is clean or not, and then try to make some measurement if it is not clear. So yeah, you were not seeing my uh, presentation. Yeah, uh, ask this onam, onam. Yeah, I uh, I'm just about to share since I was out, and Oluam, you just said I thought this was going to. Mm. <coughs> yeah, because I'm about to share my screen after, after I was out, okay. So yeah, here is the screen. So here is a random data that we're using. This is another data that you're going to use for your, for the challenge, but this is another data. So you will make sure if you have, um, so just if you have a clean data or not, as we have mentioned on the PPT or on the slide, you're going to see if, if the data is clean from later spellings and things like that okay um okay so let's say here here you can see you can see that 256 many times okay let's just go here i am going to do 600 600 okay so let's say how at how are you going to know if you have a du duplicated value on your google sheet okay so let's just click it actually before clicking you can go to extension here on the extension here on the extension um you can see add-ons macros those are extensions that i have add-on okay you can have you can add some add-ons on your google sheet file or on your google sheet slide on add-ons i have just added this remove duplicates uh, extension okay 
addons, Keith addons. For you, 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 since you're going to start from the beginning, this is the flow that, we, that you're going to uh, follow. You're going to go to extensions, you're going to click the add-ons, and on Git add-ons, you can search for whatever extension that you're looking for, okay? Now I'm trying to find for a, uh, for an extension called remove du duplicates, you can find this here. So by clicking remove duplicates, you can, I have installed this extension, that is why it, isn't, it says that it is ticked. So, but you can just click and if it is not installed, you, you, it was, you were about to get the install button here instead of uninstall. And then you will put the email address that you want to use while installing the this extension. And then after finishing that, you can close this tab and you can get the this add-on that you have added. In this case, remove uh, duplicates here. Uh, okay. So I think you've got the point right. So one of the things that we that we can do is to check whether we have many duplicates or not. One of the methods we can use is to use the extension called remove duplicates. Actually, there is also a method to remove duplicates in our Google Sheet, but yeah, let's just start from this. And you can just click find duplicates or unique rows. That's from what? Right, it is working on. So you can just select a range here. So like uh, from what to what stage are you trying to find uh, a duplicate? So let's just try to, okay. Is yes. there anyone who is trying to speak? Okay. Yes. Okay. We, My... we don't see your presentation was sharing for the moment. Oh my God. Okay, thank you for telling me. Can you see it now? Yes, if there is this okay. kind of, okay, yeah, if there is this kind of problem, I think you can just do what, uh, as, as you have did, as you have did, yeah, speak up. Thank you, uh, Miley. Okay, so can you please, okay, sharing, um, how you add the duplication advance. Of course, of course, since you haven't seen that part, I will, yeah, start from the beginning. Okay, so I was just saying, so let's say we've, we're trying to see, see, we're trying to find out if there is uh, a, a duplication in our data or not, okay? So I have just go to this page, which is the extensions part, and to add ons, it will uh, help us to add another site or another extensions to Google, to Google, to Google Sheet and we can make the analysis or we, we can make the use of that uh, extension from being here or being on Google Sheet, okay? So I just go to extensions, add-ons and get add-ons. And then here you can search for the thing that you're looking for, okay? So if you're looking for, um, now we're looking for a, an extension called remove duplicates, which is remove duplicates. I can click this. And I had already, you know, you can see that what, you, what you've been searching for here. Maybe what you're trying to use is another remove duplicates item here. If, we, if there is what you're trying to use, you can also check that. But yeah, let's just try to see it using this. This is not the one that I'm using, but I will use this in order to show you how to install that. So here you can see the install button and you can continue. So this file is not able to be opened. So yeah, there are some files that are not working. So let's just see the add-on that I'm trying to use, that I'm using actually, which is this one, which I have just installed. Click on this. I can just click this button and if it was it was about to say install if it was not installed but i had installed it it is installed and the next installed and the next step that you should do is um you, you need to choose uh in which email or in which email address google address that you're going to install this package and after that you can have it as an add-on in your google sheet okay by closing this tab you can just go to the extensions 
and uh, now I have the remove duplicates extension. Those the app sheet and app script like some some of them in the macros have are the an extension that you can if you didn't see those type of uh, wordings or things on your Google Sheet, then it's because they are an add-on and I have installed them. And in remove duplicates, now I can go to the find duplicate or unique rows. It's working on it. Okay, so now it have just selected for all the tabs so we can decide which session or which parts of the columns that we want to check if the data is duplicated duplicated or not as i have mentioned on the presentation we were saying that some parts of the data are not supposed to be uh depending on your data some parts of information are not supposed to be duplicated okay so we will just go from let's say we will go from l4 to Actually, we need to see 4,000, 4, so from L13 to L20. L20. Okay, from L30 to L20, it's not. Yeah, it has just selected those steps and next. Now, this button will find the duplicates exclude the first instance. It will, you can just uh, search for every one of them, duplicate the first occurrence or the first occurrence of that duplicated item, and it will just uh, mention the race. And if it is unique, find the unique values, not the duplicated one. So just let's say, let's go with the duplicates and find duplicates exclude the first instance. So from this, the column minus 40 and the first row contained is 600. So it's trying to show us which uh, selected column to search in uh, from column minus 40. This is the column, right? And the first row, like it, it, had, it had considered minus 40 as the name of the column rather than a value on the data. It has considered as a name of a column. So just minus 40 in the first row is 600. Okay, next. Yeah, it will fill this color with yellow. Let's just go with that or with another color. What is the action that you want me to do? So it is asking is what is the action that you want me to do in order to determine the duplicated items? Okay, finish. So we're just going to go with the yellow color. So yeah, just doing this, we can see that there are two parts that are yellowed. So we have just choose leave the first column or the first instance with that du duplicated value. So it had not it have done nothing with the first 4000 value and the second and the third are just uh, have are having this color because they are duplicated okay so just like this we can use we can get the amount of duplicated items in our uh, data okay also we were calculating the mean right so let's just go to ca on calculating the mean value from this to this and we need to click on new sale in order to make the calculation so that uh, it can simplify our work so on this top we have went to the insert the insert tab and then the function and there is here you can get the sum the average which is the mean the mode and in st statistics you can also get again the average uh we were talking about replacing the value with the median or the mean value right i mean the yeah, the mode value, right? So you can also get those types of functions inside the stati statistical function. So let's just calculate the mean for now. So just click average. So here it's asking that this is the type of the, or this is how the formula is going to be put it 
average of the first one and until the last one. So it's expecting me to put the values here. So I'm going to click value, let's say from here to here. Okay. So just enter. This is the 3495 is the average value from. Uh, I think here we can click this again from M2 to M12. This is the last tab, which is M12, which is 890. So this is the average value. So maybe let's say we were having an empty set here. Let's say this was empty. Actually, it's going to change the mean value again, but yeah, forget about that. But I, I'm trying to show you how to how are we going to be able to replace those. So we have just mentioned that we can replace empty values with the mean mode or median value right so now we'll see how are we going to be able to replace those values automatically by once with those with the mean or with the mode values since it's going to be hard to just right just search for the empty cells okay this is empty this is empty so i will replace replace this value with 3393 which is the mean value okay i will replace this with 3393 we can do that, but it's going to be tiresome, right? So we just can do, we can just come to file, edit, I mean, to edit and find and replace. Find the, maybe the empty parts, right? So I'm going to just click space, replace with 3393, three, three okay? So let's find uh, okay from this shoot. Okay, so if there's an empty space, now this is going to replace that, replace all. Okay, no more results found looping around. So let's go with searching the results first. Searching the columns first, I know. find empty space so now we have just put it from data m2 to m9 okay just this specifically this part find the empty space and replace them with the value 3393 so, okay. so yeah there are no entries matching it is saying maybe um so yeah now we've just i think it's just find the places and replace replace february 2024 with february uh, 33 93 20 okay now since it was um yeah, we have just clicked this and yeah, it was trying to find the uh, this tab, the February. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was not searching for this tab, okay? Just find. replacing February 2024 with this value, not with this value, rather. What? Just added 55 here. Okay, let's do with the empty set. So yeah, it is taking the data to here to 2025 March. But the point is, you can find a space, or by aligning the data, you can. Sp now it is not finding the empty space, rather the space that is filled with the with this word. Okay. But you can find those space, a space or a sale, and then you can replace the value with the value that you're going to put in, or the new, the new value that you're going to put here. And so you can use the find and replace method to replace the values that the new value that you want to replace your data on. So the next, the next thing or the last one is maybe the visualization, and you can. Uh, to make some vis visualizations, you will choose. So since you're going to have a vast amount of data or many data, so you're going to choose what part of the data do I need to show or do I need to explain visually. 
Let's just now let's go with the for example, yeah, let's go with this company code provider and with this part of the data and by selecting the data or the part of the data that we want to see visually, you can insert charts. Okay. So now you can see the charts here and in order to format or in order to uh, customize the chart, you can double click on the chart and you can see here the setup and the customize. Okay. So starting from the setup, it will show you what range of what data range are included on this specific chart. It is from G1. Yeah, from G1 to I think it's L13, right? Yeah, from to L13. This is the whole data that is contained on this column. So you will be more specific, you know, if you what type of columns do you want to see visually or what type of column do you want to include on the visual aspect and on the customized part you can put or you can choose the chart type actually before that on the setup you can choose the chart type here also if it is a column chart and then maybe a line chart it's yeah, you will choose again the type of uh, the data if it is if we can put this type of data, data online chart or not so it's a little bit difficult since it's have uh, an entry on every part so it's better to put them on a combo or on a uh, column chart so you will choose the type of uh, data or the type of chart that you want to use in order to explain your data like this yeah from where to where the range will just say that and yeah. Yeah, country code is one of, or, yeah, we can add a title or we, you can customize them using chart and using chart and access title, right? So title text maybe, it's, um, if since it is a three uh, column, maybe you can country code, let's just say, you can put the title of the chart as a country code here. here. Mm the team and any type of uh, uh, customization that you want to do for your data, you can do it here, okay? Just so remember what are you looking for while trying to do or while to visualize, while, to, while trying to visualize your data, you're trying to see main or main concept or important part of the data visually. So if you don't have a summarized part, like summarized uh, data from this big data, then be careful uh, on which type of data do I need to specifically show off as a chart or which column do I need to focus on, okay? So just by choosing that or uh, if you have a little data inside your sheet, then you can include all the data into a data, into a visual part or just like this, you can see them, okay? Yeah. So yeah, in that way, I'll just, you need to go, go and load your Google um, your data on your Google Sheet and see if they are clean or not. See if they are if they have uh, time errors or not. Try to replace the data with their mean value or with their mode value and clean the data. Uh, if there is charge, if there are some duplicated data, and you can just put them the visual to visualize them like this, and you will see another um, aspect of visualizations like Google Data Studios and other visualization visualization method and yeah, you can, based on that, yeah, you can understand uh, what your data is saying, okay? So, yeah, thank you, everyone. This is the presentation. So, now let's see if there's something from you, from your side. Okay, thank you, Absa, and you, mean. Isaac, uh, your hand is still raised. Is that there is something you want to say or it's by default? Is that a mistake? Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no, you can go. Oh, no, can you speak up? Yes, hello. Hello, hello can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Yes, now. My question is in the 10x platform. 
there is always uh, the, the, the possibility of always having the assignments. And up to this moment, I've not seen any. Uh, will we have any possibility that the assignment will be there so that we can check on what we should be doing before we submit? Yeah, yeah. what do you really want to have from the page? Actually, you have the assignment uh, on hand. Okay, you have the assignment on hand from the assignment is the challenge is shared and you will be able to access actually you're also able to access but you will be able to submit uh, if there's a submission by it like by wednesday okay fine now that, that was my question okay 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 Anna. thank you other questions eric okay eric Mozun. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your great presentation. Uh, I have joined the call directly, uh, which made me unable to see where you get the option of cleaning data and uh, visualize it. Uh, if possible, okay. Uh, okay. You, you can re repeat on that two points, data visualization and uh, data cleaning. Thank you very much. Sure, okay, sure, okay. So the data uh, visualization part specifically, it is just, you can delete this, and uh, it, you, you, you need to select the part or you need to select the aspect of the data that you wanna see visually, okay? So let's see, let's go with this two column and uh, nine rows, okay? So after selecting that, I'm going to insert, and there is charts over here. Insert chart. It's saying that it hasn't read the data, I guess. Okay. Actually, let's make it in somehow a data with the values, okay? Let's go here. So the data are going to be enough. Yeah, insert and chart. We can find this chart. Okay, by double clicking, or yeah, we we'll just open the setup in the customized uh, part with the data by itself. So there are, we've chosen two columns as you can see. Uh, it's using the column charts, and you can add the title for the chart. Uh, you can add an x axis, which is what do you want the, the x axis to be? Maybe the value here so yeah it's it will uh, lead you to add another data range or select a range in order to future them as another uh, sort of data here if you want to put another data uh, switch rows columns you can direct uh, which one needs to be indicated on the column and on the axis you can make that change yeah so that is where i have created the data in the visualization uh, and for the data cleaning part we haven't gone to a specific part we've tried to see the what part of the data or if the data is clean if the data is empty if the data is duplicated or not okay and we've tried to replace those values. We've calculated the median or the mean value, the mean value here, and we've tried to replace the mean value or the mode value in, in, in the place of the empty data. But if the data are not that much, if they're not going to matter a lot, or if they don't have that much effect on the data, on the analysis that we are making, you can just remove. If it is a column of empty data, you can just remove the column. That's what we've said. Uh, who asked? I'm not sure who asked, but is that clear? Okay, Eric, thank you. Another question? Okay, uh, so is, there is no other question. Uh, so we can end up the session here. I would really want to say sorry for the, uh, for, for, for the breaking of the network. So yeah, sorry for that, and we will meet next time. Thanks everyone for being here.
Bye.